are we all ready to get started? We are? Okay. So, first things first. Let's get all stretched out. Uh, yeah. Good. Touch your head, touch your shoulders, touch your knees, and touch your toes. Okay. So, last week we talked about recycling, and we said that you could use toilet rolls to make binoculars. Did you do it? Okay, well this week we're going to get a chance to use them, because this week we are going bird watching. Okay, so what birds are you likely to see outside your house? The best way to do this is to set up a bird feeder just outside your window. Then you can watch the birdies without disturbing them. Okay, so how do you make a bird feeder? You'll need an apple, some string, and some nuts or some seeds or some raisins. Now be very careful and make sure that there's no, no nut allergies. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna get an apple and you're gonna get them to cut out a hole in the center through the, through the hole in the apple. Make sure you get a grown up to do this for you. Then you're gonna get some string and you're gonna put it through the apple. Eventually, you're gonna get some seeds and you're gonna push them into the apple, just like this. Then you'll get the help of a grown-up to hang it outside your window. Then you'll be looking out for all the different little birds that are in your area. Can you think of any? There is the robin redbreast, and it has a red chest. You have crows or ravens or rooks. They're very difficult to tell apart. But the raven can speak up to 40 words. And did you know that crows can tell the difference in human faces? A crow can make stones and sticks into tools. And crows will tell each other if you've been nice to them or if you've been mean. So please remember that. Then there's the magpie. You all know the old poem of the magpie? One for sorrow, two for joy. Three for a girl, four for a boy. Five for silver, six for gold, and seven for a secret never to be told. The other thing about magpies is that they are very clever birds, but they're very attracted to shiny things. So if you're walking through the park someday and you're wearing your best jewelry, you better be very careful because they could swoop down and catch it. I like shiny things as well. Birds live in, that's right, they live in nests. So they go round all year gathering up little bits of twigs and hay and even dog hair or other feathers. They gather these all up into a little nest and build them high up in the tree branches. Or sometimes they can attach onto the side of your house or a barn, like a barn owl. Dwit -dwoo. Or it could be a bat. Birds lay their eggs in their nests and then they sit and wait for their eggs to hatch out. The little chicks come out and then the big birds fly off over the land and gather things like bugs and shrubs and worms and they bring them back to the little birdies that are in the nests. Some birds migrate. Animals migrate for lots of different reasons. Many of them migrate to breed or some do it to find food. Uh, some do it because they want to find somewhere to hibernate for the rest of the winter. But we'll look at that again. Other animals migrate because it's too hot. Some because it's too cold. Some because it's too wet or too dry during certain times of the year. So some animals migrate far across the water, across the land, in the air. Many birds and bats in northern parts of the world fly south for the winter. Some whales swim from cold polar regions to warmer waters in winter. Some migrations are vertical, which is up and down. Some earthworms move from the top of the ground deeper down into the underground. Part of that might be to get away from those birds who want to eat them all up. Animals can travel a few miles or several thousand miles. Some frogs go very short distance from pond to pond to breed. And then, on the other hand, there is the Arctic Hern, which spends its summer in the Arctic and its winter in the Antarctica. <sighs> All the way round. Its journey covers 11,000 miles or 18,000 kilometers. 
That's a really, really, really long distance. Migrations can take place during the day or at night. Some birds, such as geese, migrate during the day. You've seen them flying across the sky in a V-shape. Other things like sparrows or warbles or thrushes travel at night time. Migrating animals can find their way across long and very difficult complex routes. Some use land features such as rivers. Who would use those? Yes, the salmon. And others use the mountains to tell where they are. Scientists even think that many animals use the position of the sun and the stars to find the way too. Some animals, such as the salmon, which we mentioned earlier, use their sense of smell. Do you think that you could smell your way home? I don't know if I could. Well, park rangers, that's it for today. We've looked at all the different birds, we've created a bird feeder, and we've talked about migration. Next week, we'll be back and we'll be talking about hibernation. Speaking of which, I think it's time I went for a nap. See you later. <laughs>